All Tomorrows, the only spec zoo body horror that has ever left anyone hopeful for the future. Would you show mercy to an alien species that genetically leather-faced all of humanity with no regard for the beings they were creating, or would you give them a taste of their own medicine by giving them a rectum right below their nose? Why did the Q even leave in the first place? And how did a creature from Earth end up millions of miles away on another planet with copper-boned flagella heads that function entirely different from it? Stay tuned to find out on In The Tomorrow. If you haven't seen my three other All Tomorrows videos, you should definitely go watch them. They cover basically the entire story of the book, and I'll be linking a playlist with all three in the description. Knowing that this is YouTube and most of you won't do that, here's a quick summary of the last three videos. All Tomorrow is a book by C.M. Kozman about speculative evolution in which Earth terraform Mars, and then Earth and the newly established Martians get into a war. They almost all die, but then they don't, and create the Star People to colonize the galaxy who promptly get Cronenberg by the Q, which turns them into a myriad of strange and uncanny forms, which eventually evolve into a series of new human species with their own unique societal structures. One of these species, the Ruin Haunters, throw their brains into big metal marbles and begin to make all the new humans not alive anymore, except for one called the Bug Facers, which they use for horrific genetic experiments. They eventually went to war with one species of humans that lived in asteroids, the Asteromorphs. The Asteromorphs bodied the ever-living shit out of the gravitals and turned them into a laborer class, and rescued the Bug Facer subjects. They gave them their own planets to live on and made weird spider fetuses to protect them to make sure no one ever does a space Stalin ever again. Eventually, humans went on to meet another friendly alien species that was like a snake that vomits up half a lizard, and then they went extinct or ascended to a higher state of being, and then they were written about by this thing, which is the book that we're reading right now. Got it? Good. One of the biggest questions that people have after reading this book is where did the Q go after playing Spore Creature Creator with humanity? Also, why did they leave? The Q thought of themselves as a species with a divine mission of genetic alteration, and when they saw humans colonizing the galaxy and bringing genetically engineered creatures from Earth, they were all like, hey, you stole my idea! My guess was that after the Q was certain that not a single ounce of humanity's flesh remained uncorrupted, they were either satisfied that humanity had been punished enough, or they thought they crippled humanity so much that there's no way that this species would haul its decrepit ass back out of the primordial ooze. Whatever the reason, they wandered off into space and abandoned their horrifically scarred children to die across different globes of dirt, likely to decimate some other species. To think that humanity was the first time that the Q had done this to another species shows a bit of your human hubris. I would like to point your attention to a yet unexplained section of the book. Back when humans were still the star people, and not whatever the hell these things are, they discovered this fat dinosaur on another planet that was very similar to life on Earth. It was thought that it would feed on its planet using its large claws to disturb the sediment and graze, and native opportunistic life would look for any scraps left behind. What's strange is that the life on this planet has a copper-based skeletal system, three limbs, and a muscular system that operates hydrostatically. Later research then proved that the fat bird was related to a herbivorous dinosaur from Earth that went extinct before humanity. Now I ask you, what species do we know of that likes to move creatures around, mess with their DNA a bit, and drop them off on a random planet before blocking them on snap? Yeah, that's our guy. While the All Tomorrow's universe is as vast and unexplored as our own, with no known examples of this f**kery before the Q, there's a good chance that the Q was involved. So this tells us that we are not the first, but instead not even the first on Earth, in a long line of creatures that the Q ran a train on so hard that the babies came out beyond stunt. Did. But this is still not the last we saw of the celestial stepdad that left behind the celestial family unit for a celestial exotic dancer. The author states that humanity did re-encounter and eventually defeat the Q, but it doesn't go into any detail why. I do have a theory though. It's said that when a society reaches a certain level of technology, to a less advanced being this technology would be indistinguishable from magic, and the wielders of it would be indistinguishable from God. The Q punished humanity with then unfathomable technologies like a God, and when they left, all they did was give humanity time to catch up. By the time the Asteromorphs re-encountered the Q, they weren't the weird, awkward, easily genetically manipulated, submissive, and selectively breedable creatures they used to be. My guess is when the Q came back for round two, they heavily underestimated the species that they once bodied so easily. The development of humanity along with the hubris of the Q was their own undoing. It's our turn! No humanity, no! I wonder how they treated the Q once they were 
were subdued. They could easily give them a taste of their own medicine by turning them into a species of soft, hapless blob and leaving them on a planet of broken glass, and they very well might have. But maybe their humanity showed through and they showed some form of mercy. <laughs> Whatever horrific things they did or didn't do to the Q-Aside, without the most dangerous, mentally unstable beings in the universe running around turning everyone into genetic Frankensteins, humanity was able to expand into unimaginable territories. They moved entire stars with artificial shells and maneuvered them to make the universe as filled with habitable areas as it could possibly be. They cracked the wormhole theory and they were able to cross unfathomable distances in seconds. They eventually even triumphed over time itself, extending their consciousness infinitely with what were called rejuvenating technologies. For a time, all men were gods. It was at this point that I believe humanity either ascended to a plane that current science is not capable of understanding, or they discovered something with such destructive potential that they destroyed themselves. With literally forever to develop technology, it's possible that they could discover an existence more worth exploring than a physical one. No one knows where humanity is today, or what form they might exist in. <laughs> What the mick did you just say to me, you little blue bitch?